The Passy Muir valve was designed by David Muir to be used inline during mechanical ventilation with full cuff deflation. This video is designed to provide a basic understanding of ventilator application of the Passy Muir valve. Often an inflated cuff is used during mechanical ventilation to ensure that all air is delivered through the tracheostomy tube and to the lungs and then returned to the ventilator to be monitored and measured. With the cuff inflated, the ventilator delivers a volume of air through the inspiratory tubing of the circuit to the lungs. Exhaled air is expelled from the lungs through the expiratory tubing of the circuit to the ventilator, bypassing the upper airway and affecting normal functions such as speech, swallow, and cough. For inline Passy-Muir valve placement, the cuff must be completely deflated to allow airflow through the upper airway on exhalation. Studies have shown that adequate ventilation can still be achieved with the tracheostomy tube cuff deflated. Before cuff deflation, baseline peak inspiratory pressures and exhaled volumes should be noted. Once the cuff is completely deflated, volumes and pressures are reassessed for any changes. During inhalation, a reduction in peak inspiratory pressure may be observed as volume escapes or leaks through the mouth and nose. During exhalation, if only a portion of air returns to the ventilator and the remainder of air leaks through the upper airway, then a reduced exhaled tidal volume is measured. The loss of volume and pressure through the upper airway after cuff deflation confirms airway patency and candidacy for Passy-Muir valve placement. The Passy-Muir valve is placed in line with a ventilator circuit proximal to the tracheostomy tube. The PMV007 Aqua valve is designed to fit inside 22 mm disposable ventilator tubing and adapts easily to closed suctioning systems and pediatric ventilator tubing. During inhalation with the Passy-Muir valve in line, air flows from the ventilator through the Passy-Muir valve and into the lungs. When inspiratory flow stops, the Passy-Muir valve closes and remains closed throughout the expiratory cycle. All exhaled air is redirected through the upper airway, mouth, and nose. As a result, aerodigestive tract functions such as speech, cough, and swallow are improved. Because the Passy-Muir valve closes at the end of inhalation and before exhalation begins, a column of air remains in the tracheostomy tube and provides a buffer, preventing secretions from entering the Passy-Muir valve and ventilator tubing. When using the Passy-Muir valve during mechanical ventilation, some adjustments to the ventilator may be necessary. For patients with inspiratory volume loss, additional tidal volume can be provided until baseline peak inspiratory pressure is reached. This assures adequate alveolar ventilation. An increase in delivered tidal volume may be a temporary adjustment until strength of the pharyngeal and laryngeal muscles is regained. Since exhaled volumes are not returned to the ventilator, adjustments may be made to low volume and pressure alarms for adequate monitoring. To learn more detailed information about the clinical benefits of the Passy-Muir valve or advanced ventilator application, please visit the Passy-Muir website to register for self-study or live web-based seminars. All of our courses are free and available for continuing education credit through ASHA, AARC, and California Board of Nursing. Or call one of Passy Muir's experienced clinical specialists today.